A car travels on a straight track. During the time interval t 0 to 60 seconds, the car's velocity v is measured in feet per second, and acceleration a measured in feet per second per second are continuous functions. The table shows selected values of these functions. Part A. Using appropriate units, explain the meaning of the following integral in terms of the car's motion. Approximate the integral using a trapezoidal approximation with three subintervals determined by the table. This integral represents the distance in feet that the car travels from t equals 30 seconds to t equals 60 seconds. A visual interpretation of this is the graph that can be approximated with the points given to us. These are the approximate points that they give us. So you can see that there would be much negative area and a little positive area. But since this integral has the absolute value signs, the graph looks more like this. And that gives you more positive area. Because the V of t is an absolute value sign, the intel integral represents the distance, not displacement. So an acceptable answer on the AP test would be the integral from 30 to 60 of the absolute value V of t dt represents the total distance traveled in feet from t equals 30 seconds to t equals 60 seconds. That answers the first part of the question, but now it asks for you to approximate the total distance. So the integral, so the trapezoidal sum will have a graph. This will be zoomed in, so this is going to be 30, and this will be 60. It's going to look approximately like that. So the trapezoids would then be like that. So to find the area of those trapezoids, this first one is going to be 1 half, and the coordinates for these are all given in the table, 14 plus 10, base 1 plus base 2, times the height, which is the distance right here, and that is 5 in this case. We want to add that to the next one, that's going to be 1 half, 10 plus 0, times the height is 15. We're going to add one more. It's going to be 1 half, 0 plus 10, times 10. When you add this all together, you get 185 feet. Part B. Use an appropriate units explain the meaning of the following integral in terms of the car's motion. Find the exact value of the integral. So the first step is to explain what the integral means. This integral represents 
the car's change in the velocity from time t equals 0 to t equals 30. So an acceptable way to say this for the AP readers would be to write out the integral. And then say it represents the car's change in velocity and you need to remember to add your units in feet per second from t equals zero seconds to t equals 30 seconds. Now for the second part of the question, you need to find an exact value for this. And this can be very tricky because they don't give you an actual function, they just give you points of a function. But you can reinterpret the integral they gave you because this is the one they gave you and as you've learned, the acceleration is equal to the derivative of the velocity. So if you plug that into the integral instead, when you anti-derive it, you're going to get v of t evaluated from 0 to 30. So then what you do is you do v of 30 minus v of 0. You just plug in the units as usual. And then you get negative 14 minus a negative 20. This gives you 6 feet per second. Part C. For the interval between 0 and 60, must there be a time t when v of t equals negative 5? Justify your answer. This one can be a kind of a tricky one to understand, but if you look at the graph of the points, it looks approximately like this. And this is just an estimate, but it'll you'll understand the point. You see that it is also mentioned that the function is continuous. So if you were to draw in a function with these points, it could possibly look something like that. And two of the points on the graph are 35, negative 10, and 50, 0. Because of these two points, it shows that the y values change from negative 10 to 0. And since it's mentioned that the function is continuous, there must be a time when v of t equals negative 5. So a way to write this for the AP readers is to say, yes, since v of 35 equals negative 10 and v of 50 equals 0, the intermediate value theorem guarantees a t in the interval 35 to 50 when v of t equals negative 5. Part D. For the interval between 0 and 60, must there be a time when the acceleration is equal to 0? Justify your answer. 
This is very similar to the last question, so it's very helpful to draw the graph again. As you can see on the graph, this point right here and right here, circled in red, have the same y value. Their points are 0, negative 20, and 25, negative 20. This means that the derivative has to be 0 somewhere between those two points since it changes from going negative to going positive there has to be a time where the derivative is equal to zero. And this is guaranteed by the mean value theorem. So a way to say this for the AP test is to say yes. Since V of zero equals V of 25, the mean value theorem guarantees a t in the interval 0 to 25 so that a of t equals 0.